All right, after folding and finding common denominators for your cakes, we're going to try a different way. So let's read the example here. Right? Four fifths and one half as a pair of fractions with common denominators. So it says you can use common multiples to find a common denominator. You're going to list the multiples of each of the denominators, and then a common multiple can be used as a common denominator. Now that's going to take a lot of time to write all your multiples, right? So we're going to try it this way first, and we'll see if we can try it a different way in a little bit. So step one says to list multiples of 5 and 2. Now if you remember multiples, it is what we are counting by, correct? Okay, so let's fill these in. 5 is there, 10 is there, what are we going to have next? So 15, 20, and 30. Now we're going to do 2, so here we go. 2 is already there, so we're going to put 2 back here. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Now take a look. What are the common multiples? And it in? Just the ten. Do you see any other ones? No. Oh. So you're going to use your common multiple of ten as your common denominator. So we know that five will divide into ten and two will divide into ten. Okay, so take a look at what they're doing here for your equivalent fractions. This is what we did uh, two days ago. Okay, yesterday we did simplest form. Two days ago we were finding our equivalent fractions, so we were using multiplication to do that. So that's the same thing you're going to use here. So here's your four fifths that you started with in your problem up here. Everybody see it? And then you have your half, which is right here. Okay, so you're going to take the four on the top to give me a number to come over here. Now, I'm going to start right here. Why do you think I'm starting there? Because I already know what? I already know two numbers, and all I have to do is fill in the missing one, right? So what number times 5 will give me 10? Two. 2. So I'm going to put the 2 in here. And what was the rule that if I multiply by 2 on one side, I have to do what to the other? Multiply by the same thing, which is also going to be 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so I did it to this one, so now I have another, there is my equivalent fraction, okay, now I'm going to do the half, so which one do I have? Right here, so what, it's going to multiply by 2 to get 10, five. so 5, so what am I using on the top? Five. 5 again, so 1 times 5 is 5. five. So here are my two fractions, and what do you notice about the bottoms of them now? That's what we call the common denominator. Okay, remember denominators on the bottom of your fraction? So that's what we're finding, is the common denominator at the bottom of your fraction. Okay, so it says to choose a denominator that is a common multiple of 5 to 2, that's where 10 came in. So we found all of them, and then we used 10. Okay, so it says you can write 4 fifths and 1 half as, what are we writing them as? 8 tenths and 5 tenths. So when it told us to write these fractions as a pair of fractions with common denominators, these are it right here. So instead of writing them like that, those don't have common denominators. And I want, to, I want you to look at something. What do you notice about the 5 and the 2 and what we ended up with with our common denominator? <laughs> 5 times 2 is 10. That will happen a lot. Okay? Think about that. Okay? When we had it over here, um, we didn't really have any of those. We had, so here we have 2 and 3. What is that? And how many pieces did we end up with? See a trend? Something to think about. Okay? All right, the error alert says to remember that when you multiply the denominator by a factor, you must multiply the numerator by the same factor to write an equivalent fraction. So that's just meaning you have to make sure these are both by 2 and these are both by 5. Do they have to be the same for both of the fractions? No, but they have to be the same for the numerator and the denominator. Okay? All right, so let's go down to number 1. Are 4 fifths and 1 half equivalent? Here's what you started with. These were the fractions you came up with with common denominators. Are 
they equivalent to each other? No. All right. I see a lot of shaking of heads and no. So we're going to say no. And basically, we're going to use the work that we just did. What is four-fifths going to be? What we have? Eight-tenths. So we found that four-fifths is, now I'm just going to put an equal sign to eight-tenths. And one half is, or excuse me, not one fifth, one half. I said one half, I meant one fifth. So one half is equal to five tenths. So basically, we just wrote what we found. Four fifths is eight tenths. I want to get rid of that, is that's too much. So four fifths is equal to eight tenths, and one half is equal to five tenths. These. are not the same, as you can clearly see. So once you find a common denominator and you have those, it's easy to tell which one is equivalent and which ones are not equivalent. Okay, number two says to describe another way that you could tell whether four fifths and one half are equivalent. Now, some of you are going to go, well, we just did. Yes, but look at your two fractions you have. Eight tenths and five tenths. What did we work on yesterday? Well, I know what did we do yesterday. Aha, we found the simplest form. Is 8 tenths and 5 tenths in simplest form? No, they're not. Because if you look, 8 can be divided by something other than just 1, and so can 10. Right? Now, so that means that down here, I could put them into simplest form. So we're going to do that. We're going to say that 4 fifths. And... The one half are written in simplest form. These two are not written in simplest form, but if you put them in simplest form, what's going to happen? They're going to end up being four fifths and one half. Right? Okay. So you could take 8 tenths and 5 tenths and put them back in simplest form, but you're going to end up with what? The same thing you started with. Right? So think about that also. When you're taking them and putting them into common denominators, you may not have the simplest form, and that's okay. Okay? Yesterday we discussed having to do everything in the simplest form, and we had to get to simplest form. But now when you're doing common denominators, you may not have your fractions in simplest form, okay? Because we're looking for common denominators and not necessarily looking for simplest form, so there's a big difference here. Okay, let's go down here to this first question at the bottom. Let's see how well we paid attention and know what we're doing with our common denominators. It says to find a common denominator for one-third and one-twelfth by dividing each whole into the same number of equal parts. Use the models to help you. So, as we did over here with our paper folding, Okay, we folded this one in a half, we folded this one in a third, so know what we're doing, yes? So look over at this next one. Here you have it in the thirds, and here you have it in the twelfths. I want you to think about what is the common denominator going to be in the numbers one-third and one-twelfth. If this one's in twelfths, what may I have to do to this one? Right in. Make it into twelfths. So if he wants to make it into 12, so what do you think my common denominator is going to be? 12. Okay. Is 3 divisible by, or is 12 divisible by 3? Yeah. And is 12 divisible by 12? Yeah. yeah. So what am I going to do to this to make it into 12? Or what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to draw down, and I'm not going to split it four times. I'm only going to draw three lines to get my four. So I'm going to do it just exactly like what they have. 
so that now it is both split into 12s. Does everybody understand that? And again, you want to look at your bottom numbers because that's the denominators we're looking at. And we use 12. Okay. All right, let's flip. All right, we're going to have to do our pair of fractions with a common denominator. Now, this is where we're going to have to do some of that multiplication that we did two days ago to find equivalent fractions. You're going to need to find equivalent fractions that are both going to end up with the same what? Denominator. My denominator has to be the same or common. That's why they call it common denominator. Okay? So, let's look at this first one. Are you with me? Okay, so what do you think we're going to do to make <coughs> this as a common denominator? What do you think is going to be? If I have 2 on the bottom of one of mine and 4 on the bottom of my other, what do you think my common denominator here is? I have three people that know. You guys, look at the two numbers. Can I do it with 2? No, because 4 can't do that. Can I do it with 4? Yes. Yes. Is there any others I can do it with also? Yes, there is. I can do eights. Okay, so let's do eights. Okay, so if I'm doing that, I'm going to take my half here, yes? So I'm going to have one times something to give me something over here, and then I'm going to have two times something to give me the eight on the bottom of the fraction. So I need to put the eight here. Okay, so what number times two gives me that eight? The 4 is going to go here. So that means what do I have to take on the top? The 4 also. So what's 1 times 4? Four? 4. So this is what we did here. We got it down to an 8. A common <coughs> denominator of 8. Yes? Okay. Then we have to do that with the 1 fourth also. So we're going to take our 1 times something to get something. And then 4 times something to get the 8 again. Are you with me? You're using the 8 on the bottom of your fraction. That's the common denominator. So here's the one that I know easily. 4 times what gives me 8? 2. So that means I'm doing what up here? Taking it times 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. So take a look at my two new fractions. What are they? Four eights and two eights. Those are what it was asking you for. A pair of fractions as a pair of fractions with a common denominator. So you're going to start out with two fractions and you have to end up with two fractions with the same denominator. Does that make sense? Okay, so your answer here is four eights and two eights. And you can just circle them because you're going to have some space that you need to write out there. So <coughs> circle those answers. Okay? All right, with your partner, I want you to take a look at number three and look that you have three fourths and five eighths and think about a common denominator and how I would set my two things up. And then we'll talk. All right, we talked about how we were going to use our common denominator of eight, correct? That's what you all came up with. So when you're writing these out, you're going to go ahead and write your three and your four for your three fourths. And you're going to take it times a number to get you the 8 on the bottom of the fraction, correct? Okay, so 4 times what gives you 8? 2. So that means if I take 2 here, I'm also doing what up here? 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, that's the first fraction. Now I'm going to use what? 5 eighths. So my 5 and my 8 times the number, times the number, gives me the 8 on the bottom. Are you all following this? You need to be able to set these up. 8 times what gives me 8? 1. 1. So that means what am I taking up here? 1. One. So I get 5. So your two answers are 6 eighths and 5 eighths. You're still using the same fraction you started with to do the math. All right? Okay, I want you to try number four. See what kind of common denominator you can come up with it. 